Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete. Welcome back to the shop. I have an interesting video for you today, I believe, and I'll be making some chips. You know that rather recently I received a set of these annular cutters courtesy of Viver, and I've made several videos on them already, but I particularly want to be able to use these on both the Bridgeport Mill and my closing lathe. So I'll be making an adapter today. It has a number three more taper here, and I will bore a three-quarter inch hole that will accommodate these cutters and a couple set screws, and away we go. Thank you, Vivor, for this gift of the cutters, and I hope you watch the other videos, and I'll put some links in the video description, also links to where you can purchase these if you are interested. And I understand quite a few people have bought them already. Raise your hand if you have. All right, let me show you exactly what I'm going to do, and then let's do it. I may have shown this in another video, but about two days ago I received anonymously in the mail, in this blue tube, an adapter with an R8 shank on it and a three-quarter inch hole and the two set screws that would allow us to hold securely these annular cutters. So I have it what I need now for the bridge board. I was going to make one but I was I'm so thankful to whoever's sent me this. But I would like to make one similar to this that would be a number three more taper. So it'll be something like this. Now this is a smaller one for the Atlas Lay. This is a number two but there's a half inch hole here and a set screw. So this is really a milling cutter arbor to be used on an Atlas lathe. But similarly, I had this in stock for years. I have no idea where I got it. This is a number three Morse taper. It is threaded here, but I don't think I'll be using that. I wish it had a tang so that this couldn't twist, but it's machinable. This is not hardened, so I will be putting this into the closing lathe, drilling and boring, and then two right angle set screws. I believe they'd be 5 16 18. Now, if this does twist on me and turn on me in the tailstock as I make cuts, I will attempt at some point, but not in this video, to make a tang that would thread into here to keep that from twisting because we do not want the whole shooting bang to uh, to turn on us. So it'll be something like this. Alright, let me show you the tooling that I will be using. This is a three quarter inch diameter hole and it's about one inch deep. That isn't real critical. I'll probably go about one and one sixteenth. And once I have this in the headstock I will be using a center drill, a quarter inch, half inch, these are just pilots, and then this is one size smaller than three quarter, and then I'll be going in with one of these boring bars, I'm not sure which yet until I set it up. Let's step over to the closing. I have already removed the big three jaw chuck and I put a thread protector on there and then this is the adapter that fits into the taper and it's a number three adapter. Now I prefer everything's wiped and cleaned. I'll pop that in there and when I put this in here I'm ready to go. I'll tap it a little bit with a lead hammer but that way it's going to run concentric and I think this is better than attempting to chuck this in a three jaw chuck because there could be a little run out. A fella could use a four jaw. Might even be better but I think this is going to work great. Let's drill, starting out with a center drill or a starter drill. And now one fourth inch pilot, inch and one eighth deep. And now half inch. And finally, 23 30 seconds. Now, I'm not able to ream that hole because it is so shallow 
And the uh, reamers just don't work good on shallow holes because they are tapered at the end. So I am using this carbide insert type of boring bar. And notice that I have a minimal amount sticking out, perhaps inch and a half. Do not extend any more of a boring bar than necessary because they'll ring like a tuning fork. And I am using power feed and I've also set the stop. And now let's do some boring boring. Well I took one more pass without increasing the feed. Clean the hole out real well. And look at that. The cutter fits in right up to the shoulder. It's a good fit. I don't feel any wobble at all. Now before I take this out of the lathe, and that didn't take long, only about three cuts, or three passes rather. So now I'll face the end, not that it needs it, it's not real bad, and I'll put a nice healthy chamfer on there, and then we're ready to put some set screw holes and tap them. And now the chamfer. Okay, I'll knock it out of there. Knock it out of the ballpark. Now I've got to take the sleeve off. The adapter. The threaded holes on this R8 shank are one half inch in. So I have set the height gauge for a half inch. I put some layout die on the work. Now I don't need this all the way around, but no charge. I need two holes now at right angles to each other on that line. However, will I lay those out? Using the center finder head, and then the other ones will be at 90 degrees to that. And I'm just eyeballing that and it's going to be close enough. And with a square I transferred these lines on the end over onto the round part of the shank. Can you see the intersection of the two lines there? I've circled it. So there's two of them 90 degrees apart. And I'm going to drill and tap those, or at least drill them on the milling machine. It could be done on the drill press. Now a lot of you are going to ask, where did I get this machined, unmachined blank? I don't know. I've had it many years ago and I do know that originally South Bend showed these in one of their catalogs, but I don't believe this is a South Bend. It's set up in the Bridgeport vise and I already used the edge finder to find the middle and then I just rotated the work. I know it sounds kind of crude until that layout line lined up with the center drill here. So I'll center drill it, drill it 5 16 through one wall only and then tap 3 8 16 and then I will rotate it 90 degrees onto the other layout line and do the same. I won't show both. And now 5 16 with a stubby drill bit. I love them. Tap 3816, now slow speed, back gears.
Now, one more time, off camera. As simple as this job may seem, that is drilling two cross holes at 90 degrees to one another, I cannot hold this item by the shank here because it's tapered. I have to hold it by the larger part here. But generally for a project like this, I would use either the index head or a square collet block or the wonderful rose index, but this does not lend itself well to set this up. Remember, this is only a fixturing device, not a holding device. So it won't work for that, I don't believe. If you have a better way of doing this, how would you do it? Put it in the comments. Of course, there are burrs inside of the hole now, so I am able to use a reamer to clean those up. Remember, there's quite a bit of taper on the end of a hand reamer. And the cutter goes in there fine. You can see the two holes. Let me remove that layout die real quickly. And we'll install a couple set screws here and see how it works. Looking pretty good. I'm happy. Well, I must admit, it looks pretty good. Even though I didn't do a whole lot here other than drill and bore a hole and tap a couple holes. But I wanted it to be concentric and to look good. Something that I needeth not to be ashamed of. So let's put a cutter in there lining up the two flats with the set screws. As such. Now these are sharp. Be very careful. I don't believe in wearing gloves in the shop. But if those are tightened down real well, this cutter cannot rotate at all. Now let's step over to the machine and you'll see what I'm talking about. So now this will fit in the lathe, the number three more taper, and this will allow the cutters to be used in the bridge port. So I'm fully equipped and I'm happy as a lark. You may have watched one of my recent videos where I did some work with these annular cutters and I held it in this big three-quarter inch capacity uh, ball bearing chuck by Jacobs and actually I did work pretty well. And it can't spin because there's a tang on the end of here which I will lack right here and I mentioned that earlier. The problem with this other than most people don't have this and this is a $500 chuck would you believe that? But there are hardened jaws and this is a hardened shank plus it's, there's some flats on here that interfere with it so I was worried about them spinning in this chuck but they didn't seem to but this should solve the problem other than no tang. Let's test this out and drill a one inch hole in one and a half inch diameter cast aluminum, aluminum, not rolled. And I think I'll be at about 450 RPM. And we want to make sure this doesn't spin in the quill. Was that? Too awesome for words. Well that about completes the job and it works just fine. You notice that it did not spin and the cutter comes right out without any problem and this is what I just drilled a few minutes ago. It really drilled easily because this is so sharp and this is cast aluminum. It really machines well and that's the plug. The part that I did not have to reduce to chips. All right, leave a comment. That concludes this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and be sure and watch some of my other videos. I am producing two or three per week. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. And one more thing, if you like these annular cutters, I do have a link in the description, and I believe that there's a 5% discount if you use the code. Thanks for watching.